Yo, what up? This your man, Flesh of Pete, and you know I got so. <laughs> you just released a new single for a long time, which I know is sort of like a song that you attributed or dedicated to Static. I'm just talking about that song a little bit and, you know, how it was all put together for you. Well, when, um, before Static passed, we started recording, you know, a lot of his, a lot of his music. And then he had a, he, he has an artist, or not an artist, but a producer um, by the name of Rudy Dandapa. He's, he's from Melbourne, Australia. And he's the guy who produced on the hotline. And he's just like an, an, an incredible, talented guy. So when we um, started working on my second album, he flew, he flew down to L.A., and then he, of course, had all of those sessions, and we just said, you know what, let's, let's do it for my second album. But the album never came out because, you know, of you know the rumors and and me being at Atlantic and you know going going through that transition from E one and from E one to now I'm being independent again. So it's like now I'm able to breathe again, and it's like let's let's put it out. You know, I don't want I don't want um, the music to. Well, you know, I, I don't, I don't, I don't think it'll ever be dated because that music was recorded like for a long time was recorded maybe like uh, ten years ago. And that was, yeah, maybe no, like eleven, like yeah, probably, probably about 10, 10 years ago. But for a long time was recorded. So, and I knew, I knew that this song is just like a, a, a timeless song and it's just a, a special kind of record because that was the one, that was the one record that, that he, it was very, very dear to him before he passed. You know, out of all the songs that I can have, and now you can't have this, this one is a special one. You know what I mean? Very special. And I knew why it's special. And of course, you know, online you can hear Static's version as well. And I, I know Johnny Gill also put out a version a couple of years ago. So what was the importance for you to put out this record as well? Um, She had a, a record label or whatever. And um, me and her was hanging out and I, and I played the record for her. Like, yo, this is a dope record. I can't, you know... Playing her, you know, just being a friend, playing her, playing her the rest. Of so then, next, next thing you know, she's she's like really good friends with Brian Michael Cox, you know. So like he's over her house for Thanksgiving type of shit, you know what I mean? Like they're cool on that level, you know. So she goes behind my back and goes to him and put out the, you know, get get the record from my uh, Brian Michael Cox and then just throw the record out, you know. Um, they didn't. They didn't pay Static's wife for it or do anything for his family or anything like that. So, which kind of just pissed me off. You know what I mean? But I didn't say anything for years. I just said, okay, you know what? Let that die down. And then now, the the the, 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 the person who was supposed to sing it originally, which is me, now the record is finally out. You know what I mean? And people are it's responding well. People are enjoying it. I think it's refreshing because it's real R and B. You know what I mean? It's real R and B. And everybody try to say there's no such thing as real R and B, but the people that that know R and B know what real R and B is. You don't even have to say, you know what I mean? So yeah, that like that's like that's the history on like on for a long time. That's awesome, and you know, for me, I'm really happy that you put out that single because there's a lot of artists these days. They're sort of uh, going towards that turn up route. They're making party records, so it's really refreshing to hear somebody that's putting out a ballad. Yeah, you know what it is? It's like, if you stuck at a label, I'm independent, so I have the freedom to drop music whenever I want to drop music now. Um, me, I strategically plan, like, I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a Capricorn, so I'm a, I'm a planner, you know? I, I work very hard, but, I, but I'm a planner at the same time, and um, I just been stockpiling all of this time, waiting for the right opportunity to, you know, put out music, and me being locked in the contract and all that kind of stuff, it kind of just... Years and years and years have passed, you know what I mean? Like, it, it went from the I Love Girls record to just sitting on a, sitting on a bench, just waiting, 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 waiting. And then now it's like time I can really, really, really do what I want to do. So I would throw out products every now and then. Like, I, I put out a song called Do You, you know, Insecure, like, you know, songs like that, just to throw it out. But it's not like... My best work. My best work has not has not like I haven't put out my best work yet. Just so you know. But the work that you guys like so far is is just you know that that just shows you how ahead of the game I am in terms of my my, my plan. So right now I'm currently doing Love and Hip Hop Miami, and 
you know, today is a different era to where you have to reconnect with people in a certain kind of way. I'm not the one who who's always on the internet all the time. Like I'm, I, like I, I like I like to keep my private life. You know, I don't like to, I don't like to post every little thing I do every time. You know what I mean? I'm like that's just not who I am. Um, you know, like right now, I'm, I, like literally, I, I I got home at about six this morning. You know, from the studio, being there from what what time now? So from four in the afternoon. Rico Love um, came by. Two times Drake came by. You know, I was working with those guys, and then you know they went home. I went home, <laughs> and I'm and I'm and I'm here now at uh, eleven fifty one. But our, our interview was for eleven. But I'm here on the phone with you now, driving to go play basketball with Rico Love and everybody, and um, you know, back to the studio at four. You know. Yep. So, you know, that's just like a typical day for me outside of being a father and just taking care of my son. But, you know, I'm just, I'm just not, I'm just not for that. So it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, um, it's a, um, what well, can I say? Hold on, I'm driving. There's so many like distractions right now. But, um, I would say like, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just from a different era, you know? Yep. For sure. And like, you know, you mentioned that, you know, you kind of want to keep your life private away from the social media, but you did put out Dollar Signs, which is one of the most personal songs for you. I would say that and Dream in the Air. Those are two of the most personal ones for you. Talk about Dollar Signs, because that's, I mean, that, I have I didn't really expect that dollar to come from signs. you. Dollar Signs is like, how I've been feeling for so long is like, you got the, you got the girlfriend. You know what I mean? You got all the friends around you. You got, you know, the typical music industry shit. But at a, at that age, I didn't know. Well, at, well at, yeah, well, pretty much my entire career, I didn't know there were so many people that just like wishy washy. Like certain people, no. Like I have relationships with them regardless. You know, certain artists, like we're always gonna be cool. We're gonna check on each other's other's families. We're gonna kick it, and you know, we're gonna, you know, we, we're gonna check on each other from time to time. And it's, it's not just about. You know, if I have a number one record out or if you can gain something off of my, you know, just from being around me, whether it's a connection, whether it's a girl, whether it's, you know, like I, I, I've experienced all of those kind of people that came in my life and just kind of vanished. As soon as a rumor came out, they didn't even call me and ask me, yo, what's going on with that? Or, or, or you know, is that true? Or, you know what I mean? And for the people that really know me, they know that that's not true. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, come on, like, are you serious? So... Those people really broke my heart because they treated me differently, and I just seen that it was genuine. And you know, just 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 going from having everything to losing it all. Like I lost everything because of that. My record deal. It's like losing your job. Then the, you know, when, 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 the, when the job goes, the girl goes. You know, the girl I was dating with at the time. Then eventually, you know, the manager goes, and he jumped ship, and and, and that was like one of my um. You know, like you know, you know, like when you build a company with someone, and it's and it's and, and that person plays a major part in, in your operation. But now that person is gone, so now you have to put yourself to overdrive and fix all the mistakes of that that person made, and um, you know, take the place of the job that that person provided. You know what I mean? So just finding different ways to do that, and and then going through the different people and transition to get to that was kind of hard. You know what I mean? And then. Meanwhile, you know, you're, you're my son, I have to look like I'm still, you know, well off and I'm still this and I'm, still, you know, and, and, and to him and to my mom and to everybody, I have, to, I have to keep that perception because that's what this industry is about. Like, you know what I mean? Like, that's why everybody play like they rich. Everybody, you know, I, I feel like nobody's real anymore. They don't like, like everybody's rich. You know what I mean? And nobody struggles and nobody goes through ups and downs, but I'm different. I'm, I'm, I'm. I'm, I'm telling people that it's okay to do that, and it's, and it's okay for people to be here for a season, and 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 you know you you you're here for a reason. That's why you got to keep going, you know. But um, yeah, that 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 song was just like one of those kind of songs, man. <laughs> and then, man, like I don't know, man, just just dollar signs never money never changes for people. You know what I mean? Yeah. But people will will, will 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 kill their own brother. They will they will rob their own mother. They you know. They do anything for money, man. And then now it's, you know, now life and fame is, 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 is more addicting than money, but it's just like, what happened to real people, like, loving you and being genuine towards you, you know, period. You know, like, if I, 
like I, I like I ain't gonna lie. When, when I was the champ, when I was number one on the charts, and number one, man, let me tell you something. People that don't know me because because I don't really speak that much to everybody. Just he Eric and he stuck up, but that's because that's the insecurity on your behalf. You know what I mean? And you know that's 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 that's, that's one way to look at it. But the people who know me know that yo, this guy a, has a, a heart of gold. You know, I'll give a person a shirt off my back, and I've helped so many people, so many people. And I was just thinking about this before this interview, you know. So, so many people I help get in different situations, whether it's, you know, work with somebody else, whether it's, you know, you know, um, put them on in the situation to better their life, in a sense, right? Yep. And those same people won't even call you when a hurricane coming to, to Miami to say, hey, man, are you okay? But me... I'm sitting. I'm sitting here. I'm working, and I'm still in a good position in life. You know what I mean? I'm just not where I want to be, but I'm working on getting there. You know what I mean? I'm not complaining at all, but it's like I'm calling and checking on people, and I thought of you. You know what I mean? I thought of you. I thought of you because I helped you, and because I've been so so genuine towards you because I care, and you didn't even call. You know, several people, but it's like you can't take it very personal. But you just gotta see things and people for who they are. You know? Yep. But it hurts though. It hurts. No, that abs- song is like for all of, all, like that entire feeling, man. No, absolutely. So, you know, you had mentioned previously, you know, you had left Atlantic, and I remember at that time you had signed with E1 and you put out the song with Tyga, and then it all of a sudden just disappeared, and like we were waiting for that album, it never came out. What happened at, uh, with your situation at E1? All right, so at E1, um, so Tyga, Tyga was like, I saw Tyga at a Rihanna party. And um, it's like Flo Rida's there. As a matter of fact, me and Flo is there. Um, and everybody's there. Rihanna, Bruno Mars, everyone's there. And um, I run into Tiger. Chris Brown is there. Everybody's there. So Tiger says, oh, man, let, let, let's put out that record. You know what I mean? That that, that I'm on. And I said, yeah, I, I want to put it out. I'm independent now. I'm over at E1, whatever, whatever. He's like, yeah, man, no, no worries. Just, just put it out. So I said, okay, cool. So this is me coming into a new label situation with, with a wrestling Tiger. You know what I mean? And then the thing about Tiger is we were we were on tour together and we were just always cool. We were like on the America's Most Wanted tour when I was at Atlantic and stuff like that. So we were just always cool. And, um, you know, I put him in a Boyfriend Number 2 video before he was hot. You know, I'm just a genuine guy. Like, yo, if I rock with you, come to the video shoot. If it's going to help you, then I'm rocking with it. Let's do it. You know what I mean? So, obviously, throughout that time now, Rap City, you know, took taking off and stuff like that. So, he's feeling himself in, 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 you know, he's, he's in a different headspace. And a lot of these artists, what they do is they stay in character and they forget about everything. And they just, you know, once they're there, fuck everybody. You know what I mean? So, it was one of those situations where I'm at E1 and I, I, I got a clearance from cash money because I have a, a great relationship with Baby and Slim. Um... I got the clearance from Ted's over at Young Money because those, like, the, we always, those people are, have always been good to me, you know? So everybody's like, yo, um, Tiger, Tiger now needs to um, clear the record to, 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 you know, to do the video and all of that stuff. So we came to Tiger and said we had 15 grand for him to be in a video. He asked for 25. So we called in his manager at the time, Jay Irvin, like, yo, man, come on, man. And he says, like, um, well, well, Tiger said he don't want to do it, whatever, whatever. So now I'm reaching out to Tiger personally, like, yo, what's up? Because now we don't put money, you know, we, we don't put money behind behind the record and all of that kind of stuff. And it just seems some kind of way, you know what I mean? And, um, you know, all I needed from him was just for him to do the video. So now, lo and behold, I, 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 matter of fact, I get on the phone with Tiger and then he says, oh, I can't do no more R&B. I can't come out with any R&B songs because of um because I got something coming out with Chris. He tells me that. Yeah, that, that's some bullshit. You should have told me that before you told me to put out the record and that you wasn't gonna support it because now it makes me look bad at this label. It look, it, you know, it, it, like like especially especially since I'm new there and the fact that they spent money on you know on it. You know, so now that you're not gonna support it, it fucked up the whole thing. You know, so maybe like. A couple months later, I was shooting a video in L.A. for the song that he was on. So I'm like thinking, like, man, I'm gonna fuck this nigga up when I see him. Like this, and he's, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm pissed. So one of the guys said, "Oh, Tiger's outside." So I see him. He's at the 
um, he's at the set of the video shoot that he's supposed to be in, but he's like looking at a house or something like that. So from then on, I mean, it was like, all right, do I do something to this guy? What's that going to solve and stuff like that? Especially, I'm at E1 now, and it's like, okay, you fight on the set of your videos and shit like that. That's just very unprofessional. And you know what? We grown. Just take the, just take the loss and move forward. So I took that loss, and it just, you know, Bobby Valentino was at the at the label at the same time, and um, his album came out of his tank, tank really bad. So I was like, I ain't gonna just put my album out like that. The tank, I'll take my time and create a situation, and um, you know. You know, whenever the time is right, then I'll put the album out. So I was working I was working on being on Love Being Pop LA at the time, but then that fell through and then, you know, now I'm here on, on Love Being Pop Miami. So it's like now is the perfect time to reconnect with people because I don't have the money of a major label, but as long as I have a way to connect with the people and put out new music, I mean that's I, I mean that's that's like putting out music is the easy part. So I'm just good at that. And, and that's something that people can't take from me. Like, you can say what you want to say about me, especially a person that you don't know, but you can't say that I don't make good music. And if you just look at what I put out in the past, and it, may, and it, and it hasn't been as much as others, but on a consistent basis or on an album basis, every song you can go to and play from, you know, you can, you can play my album from top to bottom or even just mixtape songs or leak songs that just got a vibe to it, so... You know, I know that I'm good at that. So all I know I need to do is just get in front of the people again and do what I'm doing exactly right now. Give them an understanding for who I am and why I'm the way I am. And then go from there, you know? Yep, for sure. So your debut album came out in 2009. It's almost 2018. Do you feel like, you know, are you frustrated at all that it took so long for your second album to come out? Or it's going to take this long? No. You know, because I've learned so much in this process, and I think you're put in situations because because of that. You know, like, I've, I've learned. Like, I lost a lot of people I thought was in my corner. Imagine me being successful now and having all those yes men and all those people in my corner that's not really for me. You know what I mean? It's like, I look at a lot of people camp, and I see a lot of those same yes men and people around them. And I'd be like, man, thank God I got this bullet. Or even women, too. You know what I mean? Like, this one over here, this one over there. She went to this ball player. She went to this basketball. Like, all of those kind of people with an agenda, it's like, I'm happy. Thank you. And if it took me some time to get ready, I mean, you know, it's, it's always a tough process. But if you're if you are a, a real hustler and you, and you build your thing from the ground up, can't nobody really ever take that from you because you could always build a new house again. And... Sometimes it takes time, but when it comes out, you know, it's the, it's the best it's the best one than ever. Right. I'm feeling really good nowadays because of that. Right, absolutely. So, now let's talk about your new album. I know on your Instagram you've been, you know, playing some songs in your car. You've been recording videos of it. I heard a couple of songs that I think Rico Love did. Some static songs. I think there was a song by Tank as well. Is that what the album is going to be? Um, you know... It's definitely going to be a, a, a more of a more of a Rico Love type of album, and um, you know, um, I have a few Static songs, but I think that that's just for a, a, a like a like a tribute to Static type of EP that I'm that I'm that I'm working on right now. In terms of putting it out, because music's already recorded. But um, yeah, a lot of those songs are like songs that Rico Love did on the album and stuff like that that I play. Okay, cool. And when can we expect that to come out? Um, man, you know, I want to say top of the year, but see, the thing is, we like we just recorded a whole Pretty Ricky album as well. Yep. You know, so it's like I have to put my stuff for the back burner to put that out in a sense. You know what I mean? So it just depends. Like we just released the thing from Good Girls um, from the Pretty Ricky project. And then we got the follow-up um, record called Body. And it's like, that is the one. Like, that is the crazy one that you expect. That's going to give you that feel. So it's like, you know, we got a couple of months left in the year. The, the Pretty Ricky Tour kicks off in November starting, um, I think, like Thanksgiving weekend. So, you know, the first the first venue is um, the Highline Ballroom in New York. 
Oh wow. I'm gonna focus on that, and then um, and then um, yeah, well, like I'll I'll give you guys the dates and stuff like that. But um, you know, we're gonna do that. There's one last album, one last tour, and then the show debuts in January, and then from that we'll see whether we're gonna drop a, a Puerto Rico album or my album. But I mean, my album is pretty much complete, and I never stop working anyway. So it's like it's it's, it's gonna happen, you know. Right. And, you know, speaking of Pretty Ricky, you know, you're back with them. And I always felt like you guys were underappreciated as a group. You know, people may have just looked at you guys as making fun records. But, you know, the foundation of your records, there, you know, there's harmonies, um, great melodies. You know, do you feel like Pretty Ricky was underappreciated for its time? I don't I don't think so. I think that our fans love us, which is why we're able to still slot venues without putting a single out. I'm still here on the hotline in the club. Still here, ground on me all over the internet. Internet, uh, and, and and so many who who you know look up to us in that era. Most people that from that era, they they, they come and they say, "Yo, man, you know, you saved my relationship." Or then I, I I I got so much, you know, pussy to your music, or you know, and girls, I lost my virginity to your music. And, Things like that. So I mean, I think it served its purpose. It, it, it served um, its purpose, you know. Yep. Fair enough. Now, a couple of years back, you know, our site actually put together an article talking about, you know, the last generation of male R and B stars, you know, such as yourself, Mario, Chris Brown, etc. And how like it seems like you guys are all missing from the mainstream. Maybe not Chris, but the rest of you guys seem to be missing from that mainstream. Uh, media. Uh, what, why do you think that is? I know one of the things you said is that you guys need to all tour together to get back to you know where you guys once were. But why do you feel like you guys are missing from the radio? Um, I think that um, well, I, I can't really give you the honest answer to that because it's bigger than me. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's bigger than me. But um, I just think that with anything that strength in numbers. You know, and more people should work together. More people should put out music together. More people should tour together. And that's just what it is. That 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 creates demand or whatever. But I, I feel like it's coming back anyway because I feel like people are tired of hearing the same people come out doing the same thing, sounding the same way. You know, and um, I don't know. I guess music. I guess I guess music. I I, I want to say like it's kind of like fashion. It repeats itself. Like they like like those like. like like the uh, like the way of it, you know what I mean? You got twenty, you got twenty artists making dance hall sounding type of records, you know. Yeah. And then it goes from that to it, it's equivalent to Joe to back in the day, and then the rap era came in, and then Joe to couldn't really put out more shit because you know they they I guess they they tried to like what was the record that they put out? Was it Get Up On It or something? Like Get On Up. They they switched their whole sound and went to Get On Up because rap is in. And they didn't stick to who they to who they are. It's like, I guess music is just like that. And through that time, you gotta ride that way, and then you go to the next. And I, I think a lot of people believe that, but I'm one guy. I'm just I'm just addicted to my sound because I know what my sound do for for women and and relationships and things like that. So I just stick to that. Right. Now you know you're talking about this pretty Ricky tour. I know. A couple of years ago, you went on this Kings of Love tour with Jay Holiday and Bobby V. Um, just talk about what you saw from going on this tour in, in terms of the turnout from the fans and just all the love that you were getting. Did, did that let you know that, you know, your music still had a place? Um, the, the Kings of Love tour was a, um, it was a start of, of, of you know, of, of R&B artists working together. And I hope more R&B artists work together. But it's something I called those guys and I said, Yo, let's do something together, you know. And 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 to be honest, I don't think we did it the right way, but we tried it. And 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 and, and, and you know, we like we started something, and we can do it again with more artists and whatever, whatever. But it's a start, you know. And um, yeah, I mean, the the love from the fans and the people that came out who really enjoy like R and B music and stuff. It was like it was a good feeling. It was it was it was, it was great. Yep. For sure. And then just lastly, in terms of the state of R&B right now, I find that a lot of artists, especially from your generation, they're kind of they're kind of stuck between having to record, you know, something a little more turn up, a little more, 
you know, club driven versus something that's just straight urban AC or just R&B ballad. You know, is there a middle ground these well, days for well, you guys? No, well, see, and that's another thing about people from my from my era. You know, we stuck in the middle of a place like you got urban AC now, right? But you still have Keith Sweat, you have Tank, you have all of those guys, you know, um, still over there running shit. <laughs> and then we just kind of stuck in the middle of nowhere. You know what I mean? Because all the other PDs and, 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 and stuff like that for the radio stations feel like, you know, um, the iron was too slow for my station and things like that. So now you're getting more people trying to make what's out now because they don't, they don't, they don't, you know, they don't, they don't have any other, 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 other way, you know? And it's cool if they think like that, but I think that if we just stick to, you know, our, our sound and, Enough people come out with it and do enough of it, it'll give the people who want that what they what they've been missing. Because a lot of people are missing that kind of shit. They they like, yeah, it's cool to turn up, but damn, you can kick your girl right or, or you can court your girl or you know songs that tell women that no, it's not about you know fucking a man for money and things like that or even like the, from an Anita Baker standpoint, you know of of of. You know how she explained her story during, during you know, uh, like in her song. She, she, she's not afraid to admit that she was wrong. You know, and she and she thought that it was cool to go out there looking for some other guy, but the guy that she really loves is right. He's he, uh, like right here. You know, mistakes that females actually make. You know what I mean? Yeah, for sure. More music like that. Yep. You know. <laughs> yep. Yeah. <laughs> yep. So, um, lastly. You know, with the way that the album sales are going, um, you know, R&B sales aren't very high. So with this pretty Ricky comeback and as well as your own comeback, how are you going to define success? To be honest, I don't measure my success based on that. You know, like, it, I just build it. It's like, if 5,000 people buy my record, I appreciate those 5,000 people. And I just make music for those 5,000 people because... Music is not always supposed to be so money driven. It's just like I, I didn't get in the game doing music because I wanted to make money. I sing because I just, I just that's I, that's a God given talent of mine, and that's something that I love to do. So if it's something you love to do, just keep doing it. You know what I mean? And the rest will come. And that's how I got here in the first place. I was determined because I wanted more, but it wasn't all so money driven. You know what I mean? So. You know, if it's 10,000 people, if it's a million people, like, I'm going to continue to give them the music, music that they like from me. And that's all you can do at this point in life. You know what I mean? I mean, that's what any artist, like, that's what being an artist is. You know, whether you're Picasso or whatever, whoever likes your work, you know, that like, that's who you do it for. Nope, absolutely. And I think it's really cool that your music has impacted, you know, another generation. I heard on the radio the other day the uh, Jasmine Sullivan and Bryson Tiller song that sampled Rock Bottom. That was kind of cool. Oh, yeah, that was super cool, man. That was super cool. Shout out to Key Wayne. Um, I never met him before until he, um, until he sampled the record, but I, I think that was, like, dope. But it's like, I'm still here, though. I'm young. I ain't going nowhere. You know what I mean? Right. I'm still here. And I'm coming out with a lot of new music, too, you know. So it's just, yeah, man, it's, it's, it's dope to see the, 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 the younger generation sampling my shit. And I'm still young. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, you know, that's all that I've got for you. Is there anything that you'd like to add? Well, because I'm young, we, we got a new label that um, me and Jay White did it. He produced the Bodak Yellow record we just started. Um, it's called Young Legend. So y'all yeah, be on the lookout for that. We're looking for artists and things like that. But um, yeah, it's, it's going to be great, man.